Hello, I'm Chi Peng Liu from Princeton University. I will be talking about the work Hidden Code Sets and Applications to Unclonable Cryptography. This is a joint work with Andrea Cladangelo from Simons Institute and QBrave, Jiahui Liu from UT Austin, and Mark Zandri from NTD Research and Princeton University. The talk is about unclonable cryptography, which will leverage the quantum no cloning principle. The no cloning principle of quantum mechanics says that a general quantum information cannot be copied. There is some quantum algorithm that takes the unknown state and it wants to uh, copy the state into two identical copies. Classically, it is easy since any classical computer can simply read each bit of a classical message and then write the bit twice. But it turns out that in a quantum world, if you do not know the quantum state, you cannot copy a general quantum state into two copies. The no cloning principle opens the door to many classically impossible primitives. Um, this example includes quantum key distribution by Bernard and Brazard, quantum money, which was first studied by uh, Wisner, quantum copy protection, first by Arison, signature token, first by Ben David and Satas, unclonable encryption by Gottsman, Brand, Broadband, and Lord, and unclonable decryption by George and Zendry. These applications rely on some forms of non-cloning theorems of particular quantum states. In fact, although a general unknown quantum state cannot be copied, um, to establish a probable statement for, for certain cryptographic scheme, we rely on particular quantum states instead of general unknown states. And most of the applications are based on BB84 states, which is first used by Wisner or subspace states, first used by Arison and Cristiano. In this work, we propose a generalized notation of both BB84 states and subspace states, which we call coset states. This notation has also been studied independently in a work by Vidic and John in the context of proofs of quantum knowledge from quantum money schemes. We show in this work that coset states possess many important properties of BP84 states and subspace states. We further show that because coset states have more algebraic structures, they improve many of these applications. We look at these applications from subspace states. You do not need to worry about the definition of subspace states or signature tokens or unclonable decryption. We will come back to them shortly after. Previous results show that signature tokens and unclonable decryption exist relative to classical oracles. In other words, they need to assume post-quantum secure virtual black box obfuscation for classical circuits. Here we use VBB for virtual black box obfuscation. In this work, we show the generalized notation coset states also give these applications but in the play model by assuming post-quantum indistinguishability obfuscation and, and one-way function. For our final result, we show how to copy protect PRFs. This is the first example of copy protecting non-evasive functions. For unclonable decryption and copy protection of PRFs, we need to additionally conjecture the coset states have a stronger property. The property is later proved by Kauf and Vidic in a follow-up work. Before introducing coset states, we explain the subspace states by Arison and Cristiano. A subspace state for a subspace A is a quantum state that satisfies the following properties. If you measure the state directly or in the computational basis, you will get a uniformly random vector in the subspace A. If you apply Hadamard, which is the quantum operator, on the state and then measure, you will get a uniformly random vector in the dual space A perp. Here both A and A perp has dimension roughly lambda over 2. If you are familiar with quantum, then the subspace state for the subspace A is the equal superposition of all vectors in A. And for convenience, we refer these two programs to the membership checking programs for space A and A perp. In other words, PA takes a vector and outputs one if and only if the input is a vector in A, and similarly for PA perp. Subspace states satisfy the following direct product harness property. It says that for any query bounded quantum algorithm, 
given a single copy of a subspace state for A, even if it gets Oracle access to both membership checking oracles, it cannot find two non-zero vectors in A and A perp. Here, direct product stands for finding vectors in the direct product space of A and A perp. Uh, we first note that it is always easy to obtain either a vector in A or A perp by just measuring the state in either the uh, standard basis or the hardmark basis, for which you apply hardmark and then measure. However, measuring one basis will completely collapse the state into a single vector. Thus, it will completely force the state to lose all the information about the other space. Also note that if a quantum algorithm can make unbounded queries, it can always learn the subspace A by making uh, exponentially many queries to uh, these oracles. And therefore, finding these two vectors becomes easy if we do not put the query constraint. The direct product harness naturally gives a construction of signature tokens. A signature token scheme is similar to a signature scheme, except a user is giving a quantum signing token instead of a classical signing key. Moreover, the token should be a one-time token. In other words, a person who has a signing key can generate a signing token and delegate the signing task to someone else. This signing token can be used to sign an arbitrary message, but only once. More formally, the security guarantees that no efficient quantum algorithm giving the signing token and a classical public verification key can produce valid signatures for both messages 0 and 1. Here, for convenience, we only consider 1-bit messages. Ben David and the Satas show that subspace states give applications to a signature token. So basically, we can think of these uh, uh, signatures for message 0 is a non-zero vector for uh, subspace A, and value signatures for one is a non-zero vector for subspace A perp. And therefore, a signing token is a subspace state for A. And finally, the verification key is simply the verification oracle or the membership checking oracle for uh, both subspace A and A perp. However, the drawback is that the construction is only probably secure relative to classical oracles. Especially when we're instantiating the scheme, the verification key should be VVB obfuscation. As we see in the previous discussion, the verification key is VVB obfuscation or oracles. To achieve the construction in the play model, one natural attempt is to replace VVB obfuscation with IO. The similar idea were deployed to achieve quantum money in the play model. In 2012, Iris and Cristiano show quantum money with respect to classical oracles, while they rely on a weaker property than direct product harness. Later in 2019, Vendry showed the same construction works in the play model by instantiating the obfuscation with I.O. The extra construction is more involved, but this is roughly the idea. One can try to apply the same idea on direct product harness property for subspace states. In the same reduction, one will run into a technical problem and thus the reduction fails. Basically, if we follow the same reduction, we find that the resulting task becomes very easy when instantiating VBB with IO. Although it does not say anything about the original game, it shows a technical barrier for replacing VBB with IO for direct product harness. Since we do not have time to explain more on this, we would refer to the full paper for more details. Now we formally introduce coset states. A coset state for subspace A and two vectors S and S prime is a quantum state that satisfies the following property. If you measure the state directly or in the computational basis, you will get a uniformly random vector in the coset A plus S, which is a set of vectors in A but shifted by S. If you apply hardmark on the state and then measure, you will get a uniformly random vector in the coset A perp plus S prime. If you are familiar with quantum, then the coset states for the subspace A and two vectors S and S prime is the following. In the computational basis, it is the superposition of all vectors in the coset A plus S, and in the face, it encodes a superposition of all vectors in the coset A perp plus S prime. 
For convenience, we refer these two programs to the membership checking programs for CoSAS, which is PA plus S and PA per plus S prime. CoSAS states also satisfy the direct product harness property. It says that for any query bound the quantum algorithm, given a single copy of a CoSAS state, even if it gets Oracle access to both membership checking oracles, it cannot find two vectors in both CoSAS. For subspace states, we do not allow an algorithm to find zero vectors, but we do not have such a requirement for CoSAS states. Because you can think of zero vectors are now replaced with secret vector S and S prime, thus finding S or S prime is also hard in our case, and direct product harness still holds if we do not put such a constraint. So the direct product harness of CoSAS states naturally gives the construction of signature tokens, but still relative to classical oracles. Next, we show that by replacing VVB obfuscation or classical oracles with I.O., we can achieve the direct product harness in the play model. It then naturally gives the construction of signature tokens in the play model. Formally, we want to prove the following security. There is no efficient quantum algorithm that gives a CoSAS state and two I.O. of membership checking programs can produce vectors in both CoSATs. Here we briefly explain how it works and why the same idea cannot be applied to subspace states. In the original game, we have a CoSAT state and two obfuscated programs for membership checking. In the next hybrid, we replace the underlying subspace with B and C. Here, B is the random superspace of A with dimensions 3 lambda over 4, and C is the random superspace of A perp with also uh, dimensions 3 lambda over 4. The indistinguishability between hybrid 0 and hybrid 1 is similar to that in Zandri's quantum mining proof, as long as B and C are random. This is so-called subspace hiding obfuscation. In the next hybrid, we replace S in the program with S plus T for a random vector in B. Record that the program is checking membership in the coset B plus S. Since T is a vector in B, replacing S plus T does not change the functionality. The resulting program is also checking the membership in the coset B plus S. The indistinguishability comes from IO security. And the similar argument holds for the other program. We are going to show in hybrid 2, no quantum algorithm can recover vectors in both cosets. Instead of giving a quantum algorithm I.O. programs, we now give the programs in clear without using obfuscation. In other words, for the I.O. program P, B plus S plus T, we gave the description of B and the description S plus T. And for the other program P, C plus S prime plus T prime, we give the description of the subspace C and the shift S prime plus T prime. We argue that since B is a random superspace of A, it still hides most of A. And similarly, T behaves like a random mass and hides most of S. Following the same idea, we show that all this additional information B, C, S plus T, S prime plus T prime only give limited knowledge about A, S, and S prime. By careful argument, we show that this task is still hard. Note that the last statement is an information theoretical statement. The only computational assumption comes from switching from hybrid 0 to hybrid 2. And we would like to argue that this uh, approach does not work for subspace state. For subspace state, we will have the following game, where the quantum algorithm is given the subspace state A and two description B and C, which are a superspace of A and a superspace of A perp. Therefore, given B and C, it is easy to find vectors in A uh, direct product with A perp, because any vector in C perp is a vector in A, and any vector in B perp is a vector in A perp. Therefore, we can easily find vectors in A plus uh, in A direct product with A perp. Therefore, such an argument does not work for a uh, subspace state. Now we conclude the first part of our paper. First, we show that CoSAS states satisfy computational direct product harness, assuming IO and one-way function. And secondly, 
as a corollary, there exist signature token schemes in the play model. Next, we look at other properties of coset states, the monogamy of entanglement properties. We will show coset states satisfy both MOE and stronger MOE. This property will be used for constructing unclonable decryption and copy protection of PRFs. MOE is first studied for BB84 states. The monogamy of entanglement game for coset states is as follows. A unknown coset state is given to a quantum algorithm. The algorithm is then generate a potentially entangled states, row 1 and row 2, and sends them to two separate quantum algorithms, which cannot communicate with each, with each other. Then the description of the subspace A is sent to both algorithms, but they cannot communicate. Finally, they need to both come out with vectors in both cosets, unlike direct product harness, because they know descriptions of A, as long as they can compute one vector in each coset, they can compute any vector in these cosets. Thus, for simplicity, we assume they output the first vector in each coset, denoted by S and S prime. We prove coset states have information theoretical MOE property, that is, even unbounded quantum algorithms cannot win the above game, uh, the, the above game with probability more than some exponentially small function. Note that if the description is given to the very first algorithm, the game is easy, having both a coset state and the underlying subspace, extracting both S and S prime is trivial. Similarly, if these two algorithms in the second stage can communicate, the problem also becomes trivial. We further show that if IO of membership checking programs are given to these algorithms, the problem remains computationally hard. We similarly define strong monogamy of entanglement game. Now the algorithms in the second stage need to output S and S prime respectively instead of out, uh, both outputting S and S prime at the same time. This is a property we use for constructing the other two applications. Kauf and Vedic later proved that coset states satisfy this property. Therefore, we can remove the conjecture in our work. In the next slide, I'm going to show the idea of constructing unclonable decryption from strong monogamy of entanglement of coset states. Unclonable decryption scheme is almost the same as a public encryption scheme, except the secret key is now a quantum key. It should satisfy the standard correctness and CPA security. Besides, it should also satisfy unclonability of decryption key which roughly says the quantum key cannot be split into two copies, and both of the forged key can be used to decrypt ciphertext. We will formally talk about the security in the next slide. We first look at the construction. In our scheme, the public key is simply the membership checking programs for both coset, and the quantum key is simply the coset state. The encryption scheme uh, the encryption procedure takes the public key PK and the message, and it first flip a coin R and outputs the, pop, uh, the outputs a coin and a obfuscated program. If the coin R is zero, um, the program is the following: it takes the vector and it outputs the encrypted message M, if and only if the vector is in the coset A plus S. And if the coin R equals to one, then the program takes the input vector and outputs the encrypted message if and only if the vector is in the other coset a per plus s prime. Note that although construct these two programs C0M and C1M needs to know the description of the secret a, s, and s prime, constructing the obfuscation of these two programs is actually easy. It only requires the membership checking programs, which are exactly the public keys in our scheme. And finally, to decrypt, if the random coin is zero, you run the program coherently on the coset state. Since the coset state is a superposition of vector in the coset A plus S, it will output M. If the random coin is one, you run the program coherently on the hardware basis of the state, which is a superposition of vectors in the coset A per plus S prime. 
Therefore, it satisfies both correctness and the CPA security would follow from uh, the next slide, which is the unclonability of decryption key. The unclonability of decryption key game is as follows. The classical public key and the quantum secret key is given to an algorithm. The algorithm is generating a potentially entangled states, row 1 and row 2, and sends them to two separate quantum algorithms, which cannot communicate with each other. You can think row 1 and row 2 are two different keys. Then two separate tags of unknown messages are given to both algorithms. Note that they are encrypted under independent randomness. Here they are R0 and R1. And finally, they need to both come out with the correct message M. In our case, the public key and the quantum secret key is now membership checking programs for both cosets and a coset state. For the next ciphertext, we assume they are generated using different coins. Then the left ciphertext is the IO of C0M, and the right ciphertext is an IO of C1M. If there exists algorithm that can successfully produce M, we want to argue that the left side algorithm should learn S and the right side algorithm should learn S prime, which violate the strong monogamy of entanglement property. To argue this, we show that the ciphertext, uh, the ciphertext programs are actually compute and compare programs. For a compute and compare program, it has three components, a function, a lock, and a secret. A compute and compare program takes an input and computes that function on the input. If the output equals to that lock, then it outputs the secret. Otherwise, it learns nothing. In our case, the lock is uh, S and S prime, and the secrets are M. You can see on both of the of the uh, circuits. By the security of compute and compare obfuscation, if one can learn the secret with non-trivial probability, there exists a way to extract the lock, which is S and S S prime in our case. Therefore, by a delicate argument, we show that if both algorithms can output M with some non-trivial or non-negligible advantage, there exist algorithms that break strong monogamy of entanglement gate. And this is a contradiction. Therefore, our scheme has unclonability of decryption key. Now we conclude the second part of the, of the work. First, we show that coset states satisfy computational MOE and strong computational MOE, assuming IO and one-way function. Then we show that there exists unclonable decryption in the plane model. And finally, we show there exists copy protection PRFs in the plane model. The construction is based on unclonable decryption using an IO trick called hidden trigger technique. Finally, we conclude the work. We first propose coset states. And we show that coset states have computational direct product harness. And as application, we show signature token exists in the plane model. We next show coset states have monogamy of entanglement property. Although we did not prove, the, monog the monogamy of entanglement property would naturally give applications like quantum key distribution and secret key quantum money. And finally, we conjecture coset states have strong monogamy property, which has been later proved. And as application, we show that it gives unclonable decryption in the play model and copy protection PRFs in the play model. Note that although we achieve different primitives in the play model, they require completely different structures of coset states. Therefore, we think they are conceptually very different work and ideas. That's the end of my talk. Thanks for listening.